point to it. Point to it, buddy, too. Show me which is your favorite part of the caterpillar. Mm. So I'm excited to go through all these books with my kindergartner this year. And I'm gonna show you some of the books we'll be using. I would show you them all, but we don't have all day. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorites and tell you a little bit about them and why I love them so much. If you wanna look at a full grade of everything that I'm doing for the school year for any of the grades, all of them are the same as far as the structure. And you can check out the video It'll be up one of the sides up here. I'll have a card for the third grade, everything that we're doing. So here's the books for what I'll be doing for my kindergartner. So we'll be reading 20 and 10. This is an awesome book. It's talking about World War II, little children that were hiding from the Nazis and how they saved themselves. Um, you know, there was adults involved too, but there was a lot of the kids on their own and they had to... Uh, learn how to protect themselves and what to do in case there was trouble, which there was trouble, and it talks about it in the book. Um, I like this because it talks about a really heavy topic, but since it's told, you know, kind of from a perspective of the children, it kind of makes it a little bit softer for the kids. I really liked this book. It was really good, and um, it definitely was eye-opening for me, and it was good for the kids. I thought it was a good teaching book. Another book that we're reading is The Boxcar Children. So if you've never read Boxcar Children, it's a really good story. Um, clearly they're children and there's a boxcar that they go live in. And there's just a lot, a lot that happens. They're orphaned and they have to kind of figure out how to live on their own. This is a really good story too. Um, they're all good stories. I picked my favorites. That's why I picked them. There's a movie on Amazon if you want to watch it. Um, it's really fun. But this is actually an entire series and I don't have it yet, so I'm gonna get that. But the first one is really good and I highly recommend it. I'll be reading it this year to my kindergartner. Richard Scary's Please and Thank You. This is just a fun book about being polite and I think every child, probably every adult, <laughs> struggles with being polite. So we'll be reading this one again. Um, this is a really fun one. And if you don't have other Richard Scary books, he has so many good books. It's actually pretty incredible what he was able to um, build and kind of make it more easily understandable for kids. It, I'm actually blown away by how much he was able to create and like the whole busy town town that he created in the imagination and inside of his stories. So definitely recommend anything by Richard Scarry and the please and thank you in particular was a fun read. So some of the other books we'll be reading that are a little bit longer chapter books are No Children, No Pets. Um, this one is about some children that have to move and they go and they live somewhere where it says No Children, No Pets. They're living on the beach. It's kind of fun. It's a little bit slow to start, but it has a little bit of mystery. So it does get interesting. I plan on having to work a little harder to get my four-year-old to understand this because I do think it's a little bit heavier and might be better for like a six, seven-year-old in kindergarten. You could still um, still do it for kindergarten, but maybe like that six, seven range, I think. Another book we'll be reading is Winnie the Pooh, and um, everybody's heard of Winnie the Pooh, but we'll be reading Winnie the Pooh again. And this book is special to me for a lot of reasons, but even my three-year-old, or was three-year-old, brought this to me to read. He liked it that much at that time, and there's not a lot of pictures, you see. Even though he, you know, was really young, he still loved the story and sit through a whole chapter. So I'm excited to go through it again with him this year. One of my favorite books from all of the cores that we've ever read, all of the, all of the years of doing um, Sunlight, is Here's a Penny. Uh, this book is really good. A lot of these books, they might seem kind of like, what's the word, you know, light on the surface, but deep down there's a deeper meaning. And I think this book was really good in that it teaches about um, being courteous and you don't always know, you know, the background in this book. The main character, Penny, was adopted and um, I felt like it was uh, a good learning book for my kids to realize that we don't always know, you know, where, what, you know, what's happened in the other people that we've met background, you know. Um, Anyway, this was a really meaningful book. I cried uh, for a lot of it. It was just really, really touching. I definitely recommend it for every age. Every age you should read this book. And uh, it's definitely a good learning book too. So this one's My Father's Dragon. 
We've read this a couple times. Um, it's just a fun kind of silly story. Um, really good for the imagination. And I like it because it takes the kids on an adventure of a totally imaginary place, an imaginary island, and he does some really crazy things. Like he saves himself with gum um, from like tigers and you're just, it's just kind of a crazy adventure. But I think this is a really fun story for kindergartners. Um, it's a fun story for every age, but it's definitely fun for the little kindergartners to think of these like crazy things that happen and how this little boy, you know, was able to save himself from all of the dangers of this imaginary island. The next book um, is going to be Dr. Doolittle. And um, this was kind of interesting. This last time that I read it, I felt like it kind of went home a little bit more. And it was just a really good story, I think. Um, for a number of reasons, but it's also fun for the kids to get to just imagine, you know, the animals talking and what they would say and how they would act in their different personalities. We have not watched the movie yet, but I'm interested to see how much it sticks to the story of the book. Um, I like to evaluate the books and if the, if the movies is as good as the book, which it never is. Another book that we'll be reading is Little House in the Big Woods and actually, um, we have read this a number of times. I love this story. If you have never read Laura Ingalls Wilder, it's a classic. Um, it's She paints a really clear picture of what it was like to live in Wisconsin. 1867 is the year she was born. So she's writing it, and I think she's around five years old. And it was just a really um, good book. Again, kind of light on the surface and then deeper as you go. Yeah, so this is be a fun one. We'll be reading the whole series. Um, there's, an, it's a, I think, seven or ten books in the series, and we'll be going through these ones again. Another book we'll be doing is The Dolphin Adventure, and this is a really fun book um, about a man who is snorkeling off the coast of Florida, and he runs into a dolphin family in trouble. And this is a really fun book. My kids love the ocean. They love um, going swimming and uh, seeing dolphins. So anything that kind of brings that adventure to life and like what could happen when you're out and about because I think that a lot of people dream of something super amazing like this happening and I think it's fun for the kids to get to see like oh how he handled that situation and what it was like for him. I know that the four-year-old is really going to enjoy that this year. One of the other books that we read through uh, as part of his curriculum for kindergarten but just also for fun because it's uh, amazing is Curious George. Now, Curious George and I have a little bit of issues. Um, he can be so naughty, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I hope my kids are not going to try these crazy, crazy things that Curious George tries. But he doesn't. it doesn't seem to actually make them want to do it. It more just teaches a lesson of, like, oh, he did something, and maybe he should not have done that. I mean, and it's also a little bit far out there. They're not going to crawl into a space shuttle, you know, and fly to space. But uh, I do like some of the different things that he does and tries. And I do enjoy reading Curious George and um, putting my two cents in when we're reading something that's maybe a little crazy. Like, don't climb on the dinosaurs at the museum. That's not a good idea at all. So we'll be reading Curious George again. Okay, so James Harriet is such a good author. He wrote some bigger books, like thicker books for adults or teenagers. And he also wrote this treasury for children, which I did not know about until I was teaching kindergarten for the first time. And I love this storybook. I think that um, kids love animals. Um, most kids have a, at least a love for animals. And then a lot of times, even just like a deep, deep care for them. I think that I know a number of children that, you know, if they're watching a movie, they're more scared for the animal or the doggy than they are for the people in the movie. And I think it's kind of funny to see just like how much they have that love for animals. So I try to nurture that because I think it's like good to care for animals, the planet and people too. But also I think it's sweet and precious and um, fun to see their love for animals. So we read a lot of animal books and we've read this book a number of times. Um, I think it's such a good story. Look at the pictures. I mean, they're just so beautiful and so we'll be reading through this again this year. We'll be reading through the treasury. Um, my favorite in this in this book is Only One Wolf. Uh, that's a real tearjerker, so I recommend that in this series. And I'll put the links below for all of the books that I mentioned so that you guys can easily find them if you so desire. So if you're watching this video, I'm thinking maybe you guys are homeschooling this year or you're thinking about homeschooling this year. 
I would just consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to be doing lots of homeschool reviews, um, reviews on products, reviews on curriculum, all the things. So if you want to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when those come out. Also like my video so more people can find it that are looking for good homeschooling curriculum or good homeschooling books. Or just to be honest, like books in general. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I read a lot of kids' books in particular. So I'm also going to be showing you the books we're going to be doing that are teaching more science. So this book was really fun. Um, I read it recently. My son brought it to me. Like he just found it in the bookshelf and he wanted to look through it. And it was really fun. I know everybody knows about Isaac Newton and the laws of motion, but I felt like this book kind of helped um, dumb it down a little bit in a good way so that it was more easy to understand. It's like a graphic novel. I mean, this is a really cool idea. So um, we read through this and it was just fun. Then we kind of tested out some of like what he learned, which was fun. Um, we went outside and did some of that. So this is a really good book and I feel like it kind of um, makes understanding the laws of motion definitely a little bit more like at a kindergarten level. The rest of my books are all Usborne books. The rest of my science suggestions are all Usborne books. They are so good. I'm going to show you inside some of them. These are amazing. Um, sorry, I'm not flipping through pages very fast. Talking about different birds and how they lay their eggs or a nest or they're migrating. Um, birds inside an egg. So we're reading eggs and chicks, butterflies and caterpillars. I read these to my kids just for fun, um, but they are part of the kindergarten curriculum. <laughs> I have the little label so that they don't accidentally end up in the bookshelf with everything else. Oh, see this one? This one's not a part of the school curriculum. We just have it for fun because we like to read about all the animals. Um, but these Usborne Beginner books, you can find them because they say Usborne Beginner. They are so good and they're all like hard so they're not easily destructible. We've had these for several years and we're going to keep using them. So this one's another favorite. If you guys can find some tadpoles, I think it's really fun for the kids to get to like look around. I know not a lot of us like live near penguins, but the tadpoles and frogs and the caterpillars and the butterflies are kind of something that you can like go out and find. So I definitely recommend reading those and then going and like trying to track some down. Um, we're doing weather, under the sea. Um, yeah, under the sea is going to be fun because we love learning about under the sea. Actually, I'll link to, there's a really fun Amazon um, package. I'll link it. It's from Amazon, but it's a little package of near the bottom of the ocean, specifically creatures that live near the bottom of the ocean. And I know that all of these fish came in that little box of toys. I bought it for my son a few months back. And then how flowers grow. Um, I think this was really good too, because again, like learning about the science of flowers and animals, but plants in particular can be kind of hard to grasp for kids. And this made a lot of it a little bit more clear, which I really loved. It talked about pollinating, it talked about how they spread. So that was really fun. So I'll be doing this again and I'm excited for that. And then this book has been so well loved. Um, it is out of print now, I think. Um, I have to check again, but I think it's out of print already. But if you can find an old copy of it, or if they probably have an updated version um, from Usborne, if it's still available, I'll put the link for it below because this book has been a huge hit. And I did not think that encyclopedias were that much fun until my uh, six-year-old discovered this book when he was like four. And it's so much fun. I mean, it's got really good pictures. I mean, it does have like good graphics, but oh my goodness, they love it. All of them will sit down and look at this book together. They just find it super interesting. And if you guys are looking to homeschool this year, you might be thinking about how do I keep my kids focused and what should I use? So here's a video you guys can watch about how to help your kids focus. And then here's a video about how to get started with homeschooling. So pick one of those and I'll see you on the next video.